Hello. How, how is it Labor Day already? Like, I if you're if you're if you're in the United States, it's almost Labor Day. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend this weekend. If you're watching from somewhere else, I'm really glad you're here, and I'm sorry to subject you <laughs> to the U.S. Labor Day discussion. Uh, but it's just weird to me. Like we're starting to approach almost a year of when I said, I'm going to start taking the YouTube seriously. I am going to talk to you every single week. I'm going to be here to share the news that I'm recording about the Portland startup community. And uh, yeah, we're inching ever closer to the first full year of that and, and the podcast as well, if you're listening to the audio. So uh, exciting times. It was just... Silicon Flora's 17th birthday, and soon it will be the first birthday of YouTube seriousness and things. All right, enough. Enough about me. Let's get to the really important stuff. Uh, as always, like five major news stories I want to talk about. There'll be some other stuff sprinkled in here and there. But uh, what I want to talk about first is a company here in town, well, the, the CEO and co-founders here in town called Depot. They announced this week, this is the big news, they raised uh, $4.1 million in a seed round. Y Combinator participated in that. They are, I love this from a tech perspective. Depot is classic Portland tooling developers, developing tools for other developers. Not that I necessarily have a thorough understanding of what they're doing, but I always appreciate engineers helping out other engineers by making their jobs easier. I'm going to kind of read their vision of what they're trying to accomplish, just so if you happen to be a developer this may resonate with you more effectively than me just blathering about Depot raising $4 million. So what they say about what they're trying to accomplish is this for Depot. We believe that by accelerating the software build process, we can streamline the entire software development process, increasing developer happiness and unlocking new innovation. We are building a next generation developer first build platform that uses cloud compute to increase build speeds and integrates with the existing ecosystem of container tools and services. I know I saw some container y kind of stuff, Docker and, and GitHub stuff they were talking about, but I digress. Our goal is to eliminate compute bottlenecks flatten learning curves, and empower developers to build faster. So that's Depot. If you're a developer, you might want to check it out. Clearly, they you know, have some, some runway to continue developing this service offering for developers. And I'm, I'm always excited to see, again, if Portland software technology has done one thing consistently well and and i would argue maybe not even just software like this is this is like tektronics early cultural underpinning of you know the the folks at tech you know howard volum and and crew could have said yeah we're gonna make tvs we're gonna make radios like we have the expertise to do that kind of stuff but what did they do they said, we're going to build things like oscilloscopes and handheld electronics tools that enable engineers to be better engineers. And that early underpinning, that early part of our tech culture has continued to carry through even into the SaaS and cloud days where we seem to see the most success with developers developing tools for other developers. So I'm always happy to see that, always happy to see Portland companies get the funding they need to continue building their solutions. So congratulations to Depot. Definitely keeping an eye on them. And if you're a developer, I hope you check them out because as always, buy local. Am I right? I want to check one thing off your to-do list. Just subscribe and every week I will send you startup news that keeps you informed 
about what's going on in the startup community. <laughs> Something else we have locally is just a prevalence of waterways. You know, we've got the Willamette, we've got the Columbia. You travel a few miles or so to the west and you, you got that big Pacific Ocean thing. Uh, water is important to this region and our way of life. And our friend Marcelino Alvarez, the CEO and co-founder of Photon Marine, has always been quite open about Portland doing a better job of embracing that part of our culture and our community and really doing more with water or really appreciating our potential access, what we could be doing, what kind of vehicles we could be using on those waterways. Like that's what he's been working on. And lo and behold, that has now started to creep a little further north because what Marcelino and Photon Marine have been able to do is they partnered with the port of Friday Harbor up in Washington, and they now have raised a grant, $7 million grant for the electrification of the vehicles and the port and, and all these kinds of things. So big win for a Portland, you know, physical product. If you don't know Photon Marine, they make basically EV boats. So EV outboard motor on a boat, uh, really designed to just make them more efficient. I think slightly quieter. I still need to get out on the boat to confirm that it's slightly quieter. But long story short, the same way you have seen the automobile industry kind of upended and reimagined as electric vehicles, that's what Photon Marine is doing with boats, like specifically outboard motor powered boats. And uh, it's exciting to see this, that it's not just something that we in Portland are like, yeah, that's a good idea. Or we in Oregon are like, that's a good idea. Now that's extended to the Pacific Northwest, probably thanks in part to the uh, participation of Photon Marine in the Maritime Blue Accelerator up in Washington, which Josh Carter used to run. So for historical reference, Josh Carter used to run Maritime Blue. Uh, Marcelino, Photon Marine participated in that and uh, probably made some of those connections that helped this, you know, Friday Harbor, Port of Friday Harbor thing come together and resulted in a $7 million grant. So all that, all that being said, that's all good news and um, really looking forward to see what comes out of this grant and, and how this helps the Photon Marine trajectory in terms of more people thinking about electrifying boats the same way many folks have thought about electrifying the car. Now, Marcelino participated in, in Maritime Blue Accelerator. What else has he participated in? That's right, Latino Founders events. And what Latino Founder event is coming up very, very soon? Well, sure, there's Pitch Latino Bend that's coming up very, very soon in October. But you know what else? If you happen to be right here in Portland, Pitch Latino, which we have to now call Pitch Latino Portland, because there are multiple Pitch Latinos, Pitch Latino Portland 2024 is looking for Latin-led startups to pitch on stage and they're also looking for you to buy tickets so they have some you know kind of prize money to give to the startups because the nice thing about pitch latino pitch black is they they don't charge you a ticket price to make money they charge you a ticket price so that those proceeds can go to the people who participate in the event so it's not you know this isn't one of those pitch competitions where it's like Oh, we will put founders on stages entertainment. I volunteer as tribute. Are you not entertained? No, that's not what Pitch Black and Pitch Latino are about. Everyone who participates in Pitch Latino gets some prize money to make it worth their while, to make it worth their time, to hope they recognize that what they're building is important and we value that so whether they're number one or they are don't get as many votes 
as everybody else, everybody gets something out of it. So huge fan of that format that both Pitch Black and Pitch Latino put together. But in order for that to help, you have to be in the audience. So uh, if you would like to go vote on Pitch Latino startups, you can grab a ticket. They'll go fast because I think the location they've picked is only like 300 people. And it, it's usually more than 300 people there. So if you're interested in going, please grab a ticket as soon as you can. I will link it up below. But even more importantly, all those people sitting in the audience will be incredibly bored if there's no one on stage pitching. So if you are a Latino, Latina founder of a startup, you want to tell your story on stage and see if maybe you could garner some uh, non-dilutive grant based they're not taking any equity they're just giving you the prize money so if you think you've got a good pitch or you think you can prepare a good pitch in the next month then i highly encourage you to apply to appear on stage at pitch latino portland 2024 i look forward to seeing your pitch and i encourage you to apply at your earliest convenience so continuing the random referential threads uh mentioned Pitch Latino and Mars and, and all those kind of things. But I also, if you heard me talked about Pitch Black, which was Pitch Black kind of inspired, not kind of, did inspire Pitch Latino, an alum of the Pitch Black competition, which again, startup competition where everyone gets rewarded for participating. Uh, PacMoto launched this week their Kickstarter campaign to build they build, they build backpacks like but but backpacks that they like they can you can switch them out you can like have a big big bag in the back or maybe sometimes you need a small bag i'm all about the like i can just adjust the straps and they'll stay the same way no matter how big of a pack i'm carrying back there this is not a pack moto bag this is just a prop in the business we call this prop this prop to make it seem like I'm on talking about the backpacks. Anyway, so Pacmono, you know, just started the Kickstarter campaign, like just started it. And, and I believe, I believe it's already funded. It was really, really close. If it's like, it's within a few dollars. So anyway, uh, still, you know, whatever, 30 days in the Pacmoto campaign. So if you're interested in getting a backpack that allows you to like customize, switch carrying volumes in and out, keep your, your straps dialed the way you want them to, but perhaps most of all, prevent you from throwing backpacks into the landfill every time you need a slightly different kind of compartment for your travel or work or what have you. So that's the whole thing Pacmoto is focused on. The founded by two former Nike execs and you know it, it makes me nostalgic for the the folks like like Jan Sports design office here in Portland or or Dekine out there in the in the gorge, you know, that used to make the bags and think about the bags. And so it's always nice to see a new generation of people thinking about the backpacks and the bags and really being innovative and thinking about how modern day backpack usage has changed and how the product can support that new community. So again, if you're looking for a new bag, I'm talking to you, Chase Reeves. If you're looking for a new bag, Chase Reeves, that you want to test out, or if you're anybody else who wants a new bag, I highly suggest you look at Pacmodo. And uh, again, it's really at this point, they've, they've completed their goals. So you will get the product. You, you just are like, you get to buy it at a discount. So why wait until it's a real thing at a retail price in a store when you can support them on Kickstarter and get it right now? Well, not right now, but you can get it right now at a discount. You can get a discount on the bag and get it later once they've produced all the bags. But again, congratulations to Pitch Black alum Pac Moto. 
it's exciting to see people using the Kickstarter again. You know, we had so many great Kickstarter <laughs> experiences in town, and a few that, yeah, not so great. But that's all good. It's still a good platform for people with interesting products, and clearly Pacmoto is one of those interesting products that people want to fund. So need a new backpack, head on over to Kickstarter. I'll link it up so that you can grab your Pacmoto bag in whatever configurations you choose. Let's see if I can continue this thread all the way through. So Kickstarter is kind of an accelerator, right? Like it it accelerates people through funding. Like I have a good idea, I have a good product. Really, I, I need funding to accelerate my progress. That's what Kickstarter does. Uh, physical objects do really well on Kickstarter. Uh, you know who else has an accelerator? Whole Foods. That's right. The, you know, the, the grocery store that's owned by Amazon. And be that as it may, Whole Foods, I talk to a lot of consumer products, people who are like, how do we get into Whole Foods? How do we, you know, how do we get on those shelves? Because that's really important to us. And I think it would really propel our product forward. Well, what would help even more is getting into the Whole Foods Accelerator. And two of the 10 companies in the Whole Foods Accelerator this year are Portland companies. So uh, Mate Party, which is, you know, like a, a carbonated mate canned, ready to drink beverage. That's just amazing. I was really hopeful we'd get the chance to work with them at the Built Accelerator this year. We had selected them, but they got into the fancy Whole Foods Accelerator. So good on them. <laughs> they should spend their time there. But the other company that got in also built related, but we got to work with them because we worked with them previously in the accelerator is Sabejo, which they originally started with like Sambal and these, and these really interesting kind of uh, flavorings and, and ingredient kind of things. And then, then they really hit upon the interesting thing, which was snack mix. So like Sambal spiced snack mix where they're like, Oh, this, this might be a thing. People, people really like this. And so, uh, Holly over at Sabejo, uh, had, had been pursuing that snack mix and the Sambal and all the other things, but, uh, now has landed also a spot in the new Whole Foods Accelerator cohort. So we got two Portland companies of the 10. That's like 20% of that cohort is Portland companies. And I think, you know, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention my co-founder, Mitch Doherty at Built Oregon. We started that thing 10 years ago. It's the 10 year anniversary this year. But as Mitch always says, he doesn't say it exactly like this. I think I paraphrase, but as Mitch kind of always says, Oregon is the Bay area of consumer products. I think he says it's the Silicon Valley, but be that as it may, I think Mitch is exactly right in saying that Oregon punches above its weight in terms of consumer products. And it's always nice to see companies like Whole Foods recognize that, include two Portland companies in their accelerator cohort, and uh, can't wait to see what comes out of the other side after they've had that experience at the accelerator. I know Holly will do well. I really enjoyed working with her in the built accelerator. Great founder, really coachable, like just uh, really uh, appreciated the time. And unfortunately didn't get the chance to work with Monte party, but don't worry. We'll keep tabs on them. I'm sure Mitch will be as helpful as he can be while they're going through the program, but just is super psyched to see 20% of the Whole Foods Accelerator for this cohort right here, Portland, Oregon. So keep an eye on that stuff. Go buy the products and all that kind of thing. Do you have some startup questions that you're not really comfortable asking anyone else? Like you're a founder, you're like, you have this veneer where you're like, oh, everything's going great. I'm killing it. I'm crushing it. I am loving my life. I am loving being my own boss. 
It's amazing being an entrepreneur and a founder, and you should invest in me. You should buy my product. Everything's great, but it's just a veneer. You're still, you're still like, I'm an imposter. I don't know what I'm doing. I really have these questions that I wish I could ask to somebody, but I'm not, I can't put myself out there because then people would be like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. Or why would they ask that question? I figured they would know that thing or whatever the case. What if you could have anonymity and ask those questions that you really need answered, but you, you just can't quite put out there in the public? Wouldn't it be great if you had a resource, if you had an outlet to ask those questions? Well, now you do. I created just a, a form for you to submit those questions, those questions that are keeping you up at night that you just you just can't ask anyone else. You can't you can't reveal that this is a question or a concern that you have as a founder. Whatever the questions are, no matter how big or small, please take the opportunity, submit that question anonymously if you like, or if you want to like say, Hey, no, I was the one who had this question. Then I'll give you a shout out when we answer the question. But fact of the matter is what we'll do is we'll take these questions and some good questions already rolling in. Like, I'm like, Ooh, can't wait to dig into that question. And, and I will start doing that. I will, I will answer them here for the longer form ones, or, you know, also on the blog and where they might need more of a write up or might need more citation or whatever, whatever the case. If you have these questions, please submit them as many and as often as you like. And if I can answer them off the cuff, I will do that. I, I, I do have a lot, a lot of startup experience kind of built up in this, in this beard that uh, a lot of startup knowledge in this gray beard stuff, but there are also things that I don't know about. Like I'm not an expert. And so in those cases, I will go to the community or I will go to mentors who I'm like, oh, I know you know about this. Can you provide a response here? You know, might wind up with me having to kind of bring them on to the show and be like, this is a really deep question and I want you to respond to it honestly. So I don't know where this is going to go. I'm just saying you as a startup founder have questions. We need to get you answers. Submit your questions to the form completely anonymously. We will get answers for you and we will let you know when those questions have been answered. And hopefully by you asking those questions, you taking the opportunity, albeit anonymously to just show up and say, look, this is a question that I have. I would imagine just off the top of my head, you are helping 10,000 other founders around the world by asking that question, because trust me, you are not the only person with that question. You are not the only person being kept up at night, trying to deal with that issue. Ask your question. No one needs to know who you are. We just need to know the question and we will get an answer. Okay. So please operators are standing by. We want to help you with those startup questions. Please get those submitted. And I uh, look forward to seeing what comes in. Look forward to getting those questions answered as quickly as possible. Yeah, uh, again, in the U.S., long weekend. This weekend, I hope you get to take some downtime. And if you're not in the U.S., I hope you get to take some downtime over the weekend anyway, because you deserve it. Like, you're, you're working hard, you're grinding. I get it. But uh, it can't be all startups all the time. So... Please, if you get the opportunity, take some downtime this weekend, whoever you are, wherever you are. I hope you get some rest. I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, which I hope is next week, please keep up the good work.